Hey there, it's author and attorney Kelly O'Connell of Knockout Podcasts, offering one challenging theory after another in each show. Hope you're well. It is sweltering in the West and uh, seems to be getting worse before it's going to get better. And uh, in the meantime, Uncle Joe delivered a sizzling attack on, of all the problems that are besieging America, of which you could probably count on both hands and both toes, guns. It's the fault of guns that we have crime. Of course, it's the fault of racists that we have a bad society, but you know all this. Our topic today is Joe Biden brainwashed TBI patient, traumatic brain injury patient in Stalingrad or Beijing, you decide. And the title Biden is like a brainwashed Yankee in a re-education camp in a foreign communist state. And let me explain why, but first... I've got some incredible weird news, really shocking, and uh, it happened in Michigan, a guy by the name of Ali Chehedi 22, and uh, he was charged with smashing a parakeet to the ground, stomping on it, and uh, when when the uh, place uh, that was named the store, Animal Store Critter Pet Shop, would not refund his $30 because the parakeet had a broken wing. So he took the bird, smashed it to the ground, and then stomped on it. And uh, the police were able to track him down, and he has been given a $50,000 bond, but he can pay his way out for 10% or $5,000. Now, his... Attorney argued that he was a bird lover, but Judge Rich Page just didn't accept that, and he said he's a bird killer, actually. I don't want him around any birds while this is pending. Any pets, Page said. And so the no-contact order that was put in there is between... uh, It's between uh, Chehide and any pets. No birds. He had to give his two birds at home away. So the judge uh, was very skeptical, and he also ordered him to undergo anger management and a psychological evaluation. And uh, his lawyer said he's just a an overwrought college student. And his attorney, Sheldon Miller, said he just lost it. There isn't any question. You can see it. It will come back to haunt him, I'm afraid, far, far more than it should be. And so he was expected to bond out. So what do you think of that? I mean, that's pretty brutal, huh? And you kind of have to wonder why or how the uh, wing got broken. Okay. So I was watching Joe Biden and shuddering like I normally do always. And I have noticed that for Joe, too often for the taste of the average American, Uncle Joe refers to not being able to talk freely or his aides and assistants will get upset. Remember those statements that he made? Imagine Donald Trump saying that type of thing. I can't, I would talk about this, but my aides will, uh, you know, yell at me when I get back to the White House. So my idea on this is everybody knows he's diminished. He's not the man that he used to be. And I don't know how much of a man he was in those days either, but He's clearly diminished, and so I believe he's in another world. He doesn't really know his own mind. He has become much more liberal, and the question is why, and I think it is because he's in this diminished state. It's really elder abuse, but they're taking him and they're training him every day, I believe, and brainwashing him into deeper and deeper socialism, Marxism, and these programs and statements that he makes. And because of that, he doesn't really know what he's saying. And that's why a lot of times he will stop in the middle of saying something as if he can't remember what the conversation was about. He'll say statements. He'll read them off the teleprompter. He'll make impromptu statements. Sometimes he gets angry. He's obviously frustrated at having to operate like this. But I think he's also flattered that he's the uh, world's 
most powerful man. But really, who, who are the most powerful people in the world? It's his staff. It's the people that are giving him marching orders. So it's a perfect scenario for the staff because they've been chomping at the, the bit their whole lives to be able to give this guy uh, or give give the, the world their, their true beliefs and change the world and make it less of global warming, more loving, more kind, less racist, um, uh, less rude. And even if Sheldon Whitehouse, who is from Rhode Island, he's in an all-white club that his wife owns, but he says, I'm working on getting out of it. So if you're on the left-hand side of things, you fare a lot better in these type of battles. So you're dealing with a guy in Joe Biden. He can't be shamed. He can't be embarrassed. He can't really be manipulated. He probably knows deep down he's not going to be around very long. But in the meantime, he didn't care. He clearly doesn't care. He is, he's not, his thoughts are not coherent. He doesn't know right or left. Uh, they had a video the other day of him walking around in a patio outside of a restaurant and his wife had to jump up and run over and catch him. He didn't know where he was, even though the party was just a few yards away. So they're using this, and it's great. It's like being uh, behind the facade. The farthest left players of the party take up crazily socialist positions in total safety. But are, how are they going to hide when Kamala pops up like a gopher when Biden finally fails? And it can't be more than a few months off. And that's been an idea of mine, too, is that Kamala is a walking disaster. She doesn't have the instincts. She doesn't have the commitment. She's a poser. She is a fibber. She has faked her way to the top, slept her way to the bottom. And uh, so she is going to take over. But I think there's a battle going on within the Democratic Party of what to do with her. And that's why they hung her out to dry on the, on the border. Now she's going on Friday. But anyway, so <clears throat> on July, June 13th, Joe stated... I'm sorry I'm going to get into trouble with my staff if I don't do this right away. And he meant calling on reporters who were on his list because there's a communication between the reporters and Biden. The reporters know what they're supposed to ask him and Biden knows the answer. So he, he was um, in April taking questions about masks and meeting with Russian Vladimir Putin. And he suddenly says, I'm sorry, this is the last question I'll take, and I'm really going to be in trouble. Well, who's he getting in trouble with? Can you imagine Trump saying that? Then in March, the White House shocked viewers by suddenly cutting away a live feed of an event after Biden shared that he was happy to take questions if that's what I'm supposed to do, Nance, Nancy Pelosi. Nancy's uh, uh, dentures probably almost fell out. Whatever you want me to do, and the list goes on, obviously Dems are terrified the average American will realize Biden is not functional except used as a ventriloquist dummy. But I really want to say, folks, think about this. Think about this. There's a percentage of people in the country who know that Biden is kaput. He's broken down. He doesn't have what it takes anymore. And uh, there's still... Uh, behind him and then the Trump haters all know that or the Trump people that, who are hated by the left all know that uh, he's not functional so you've got probably 75% you know 60, 70, 75% of the people in the country know he's totally incapable and they're so corrupt on the left that they don't care all they wanted was power now while crime and violence are spiking and why are they spiking because of all the unrest because of the attack against the cops, uh, defunding police. But Biden, of course, blames the spike in uh, violence and crime in America on COVID and guns. And so merchants of death are breaking the law for profit. Isn't that just a kind of thing a socialist would say? Well, that's what um, Biden said. And he's going to have zero tolerance for gun rogues. And he says, my mes message to you is this, gun dealers who willfully break the law, we're going to find you and seek your license to sell guns, and you're going to be sorry. We'll make sure you can't sell death and mayhem on our streets anymore. So just a complete left whitewash. 
So, it's patent leftist Marxism offered like gruel to hungry liberal children. But there is no cause and effect in the liberal land. It's crazy to suggest slandering and defunding police and glorifying arson and beatings will affect human behavior, right? I mean, we're all better than that. <clears throat> so why is it increasing? And sincere American workers would never do something selfish like stay at home for more money even after a disaster. Portland, Oregon is up 533% in murders. Think about that in the last year, while the U.S. homicide has spiked by 30% in 2020. Over the previous year, in the first quarter of this year, homicide was up by 24% higher than the previous year. So now it's up 54% and 49% higher than two years ago. But, friends, leadership by committee has been quite successful in terms of changing policy. For the Dems, even if the outcome has been failure in terms of effects, and each move is breathtakingly more progressive, shutting down U.S. petroleum, opening wide border, teaching race hate in school, empowering and enriching Iran, the moves never end. For example, the massive success of the border change is a subject of great merriment for all Democrats. Don't you recall that uh, our dear friend Nancy Pelosi laughed her head off? Uh, no, not Nancy Pelosi, but uh, Kamala laughed her head off when they asked her about the border. Yuck, yuck, yuck. So concessions and weakness are being driven in. They know they're going to probably lose the house in this sentence, but weakness and concessions driven into the American character more like race baiting education, like accepting political violence, allowing cancel culture to soar to new heights. But well, there goes crafty old Joe every day back to his miserable existence in the White House where he is constantly tutored in leftist arts and being brainwashed in how to think. And so, of course, he gets nervous about being scolded by his hyper-partisan minders, the shrews, the female shrews who, who teach him, who treat him like so much boiled cabbage and just hoping it won't completely melt down under the world's brightest lights in Washington, D.C. Well, thank you for tuning in. Wonderful to spend time with you. Would you whack that subscribe button and hit the uh, like button on the on the old video. Thank you very much. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow, ciao.